In this presentation, we are going to discuss problem number 3 on signal flow graphs. So, let's get started. The transfer function Ys over Rs of the system shown is one block diagram is given to us and if we observe this block diagram, there is a block of gain 1 over s plus 1 in the forward path. There is a summing point followed by a takeoff point having gain 1 over s plus 1 which is given as an input to this summing point with a negative sign. There is a takeoff point at the output of this block having gain unity which is given as an input to this summing point with a positive sign. And the output of this summing point is given as an input to this summing point with a negative sign. And we need to find out the transfer function Ys over Rs. This is a multiple choice question and was asked in GATE EC 2010 given by IIT Guwahati. So I want you all to pause this video and try this problem on your own. And if you are able to do it, post your answers in the comment section. I hope you are done. So moving on to the solution. If we want to calculate the transfer function of this block diagram, we can calculate this by using block diagram reduction rules. We can use our shortcut method and we can also use the Mason's gain rule. In this lecture, we are going to apply the Mason's gain rule in order to find out the transfer function. And for that sake, we need to convert this block diagram into its equivalent signal flow graph. So firstly, we will convert this block diagram into its equivalent SFG. Let us count the number of nodes which will be present in the signal flow graph when we will convert this block diagram into its equivalent SFG. The first node will be this summing point. Let us call this node as node A. The second node will be this takeoff point. We can call this as node B. We know that we can represent a summing point followed by a takeoff point by a single node, but in this problem, we will take them as two separate nodes. Moving on, the third node is this takeoff point, which is node C, and the fourth node is this point, which is node D. In this case too, there is a takeoff point followed by a summing point, and we can take this as a single node, but in this problem, we will take them as two separate nodes. We will discuss the reason behind this in a while. So now we have identified all the nodes which will be present in our signal flow graph. Let us now create a forward path from the input node to the output node, which will look like this. Now we can see that in this forward path, we have three different nodes, node A, node B, and node C. So we will draw them in our signal flow graph. There are three nodes between the input node and the output node in the forward path, which is node A, which is this summing point, node B, which is this takeoff point, and node C, which is this takeoff point. This is the input node R, and it is connected with node A with a branch of gain 1. We can see that the reference input is connected with the summing point with a branch of gain unity. Moreover, this summing point, which is node A, is connected with this takeoff point, which is node B, with a branch of gain unity. So this node will be connected with this node with a branch of gain unity. Moreover, we can see that there is a block of gain 1 over s plus 1 between the node B and the node C. So there will be a branch of gain 1 over s plus 1 between node B and node C. And finally, the node C is connected with the output node with a branch of gain unity. So the node C will be connected with the output node with a branch of gain unity. Now, if we observe this block diagram, we can see that this takeoff point is having a gain 1 over s plus 1, which is given as an input to this summing point. And we know that this takeoff point is node B in our SFG, and this summing point is node D. Moreover, we can see that there are three nodes A, B, and C, which are present in the forward path of this signal flow graph. But node D is not present in the forward path. Because if we assume a forward path in this block diagram between the input node and the output node, we will see that node A, node B, and node C are present in this forward path. But node D is not there in the forward path. So let us consider this node here in this signal flow graph. And there will be a branch of gain minus 1 over s plus 1, which will be connected between node B and node D. because a block of gain 1 over s plus 1 is connected between node B 
and node D with a negative sign. Moreover, this takeoff point is given as an input to this summing point and the gain of this takeoff point is equal to 1. So, a unity gain branch will be connected between this takeoff point that is node C and the node D. Now, the output of this takeoff point is given as an input to this summing point with a negative sign. So, a branch of gain minus 1 will be connected between node D and node A because a unity gain branch is connected between node D and node A with a negative sign. In this way, we have converted this block diagram into a signal flow graph. Now, we have to apply the Mason's gain rule in this SFG in order to find out the overall transfer function y over r. And for that sake, firstly, we have to identify the forward path. And we can clearly see that the forward path is r, a, b, c, y. And the gain of this forward path will be the product of these four branches. It will be equal to 1 multiplied with 1 multiplied with 1 over s plus 1 multiplied with 1. So the forward path gain of this forward path will be equal to 1 over s plus 1. Now if I ask you, is there any other forward path in this SFG? Yes, you are right. If we observe this signal flow graph, there is only one forward path. Let me tell you an important point where a student can commit a mistake while attempting this problem. In this block diagram, if we consider this takeoff point and this summing point as a single node, then in that case, the signal flow graph that we will draw will look like this. This node A is this summing point, the node B is this takeoff point, and this node C dash is the combined representation of this takeoff point and this summing point. This block of gain 1 over s plus 1 is connected between node B and this combined node C dash and that's why a block of gain 1 over s plus 1 is present between node B and node C dash. Moreover, there is a block of gain 1 over s plus 1 which is connected between node B and this combined node. So, we will have a branch of gain minus 1 over s plus 1 which will be present between node B and this node C dash. And finally, this branch is connected between this combined node and this summing point, which is node A. So we will have a branch of gain minus 1 between this node C dash and node A. This is the signal flow graph we will get if we consider this node C and node D as a single node by mistake. And let me tell you, this is the wrong signal flow graph that we are drawing here. This is not the correct signal flow graph. This is the correct signal flow graph. But we will definitely get this signal flow graph if we consider this summing point and this takeoff point as a single node. And now, if we observe this signal flow graph, there are two different forward paths. The first forward path is R, A, B, C dash, Y. And the second forward path is R, A, B, C dash via this branch and then Y. So there are two forward paths. The first forward path will have a gain 1 over s plus 1 and the second forward path will have a gain minus 1 over s plus 1. And then when we apply the Mason's gain formula in this signal flow graph, we will get the overall transfer function equal to 0, which is option A. But this is the wrong answer. Many students while attempting this problem might have drawn this signal flow graph and they would have got this answer, I'm sure. If you did this mistake, let me know in the comment section. Now we will discuss that why this signal flow graph is wrong and this answer is not correct. So if we observe this portion of block diagram, we can see this takeoff point is present at the output node and the signal is coming out of this node to this summing point. Moreover, this takeoff point is having gain 1 over s plus 1 and it is given as an input to this summing point. And then the output of this summing point is given as an input to this summing point. That is, this summing point is having two input signals and one output signal. But if we consider this takeoff point and this summing point as a single node, then in that case, by mistake, we will consider the direction of this signal to this output node. See, that is what we have drawn here by mistake. This branch of gain minus 1 over s plus 1 is connected between the node B and node C dash, that is, 
indirectly this signal is going to the output node but if we observe this block diagram this signal is not going towards the output node the direction of this signal is from this takeoff point to the summing point that is the direction of this signal is away from the output node but in this signal flow graph we have drawn the direction of signal towards the output node so by mistake we have reversed the direction of this signal the direction of this signal was from this takeoff point to the summing point that is away from this output node but if we consider this takeoff point and this summing point as a single node then by mistake we will consider the direction of this branch towards this output node which is not correct so i hope you understood the point that why this signal flow graph is wrong and this answer is not correct let us now move back to our problem till now we have identified the forward path in our signal flow graph and we have calculated the forward path gain which is equal to 1 over s plus 1 we will now move on to the identification of individual loops and the calculation of loop gain so if we observe this signal flow graph and if we start from this node a and move to this node b along this branch then if we move towards this node d along this branch and then after that if we move towards this node a then this will form a loop so our first loop in this signal flow graph is a b d a and the gain of this loop is the product of these three branches which is 1 multiplied with minus 1 over s plus 1 multiplied with minus 1 which is equal to 1 over s plus 1 we have one more loop in this signal flow graph if we start from this node a and along this branch if we move towards this node b then if we move towards this node c along this branch then if we take this branch to move towards this node d and then after that if we move back towards the node a via this branch then this will form a loop and this is our loop number 2 in this signal flow graph which is a b c d a and the gain of this loop will be the product of these four branches which is 1 multiplied with 1 over s plus 1 multiplied with 1 multiplied with minus 1 which is equal to minus 1 over s plus 1 moreover we can see that this loop l1 and this loop l2 are touching loops because they have some nodes as common So the number of non-touching loops in this signal flow graph is equal to zero. In this way, we are done with the identification of individual loops and the calculation of loop gain in this signal flow graph. We will now move on to the calculation of determinant of SFG. Moving on to the calculation of determinant of SFG in this signal flow graph, we know that the value of delta is equal to one minus of sum of individual loop gains. plus sum of products of gains of all possible combinations of two non touching loops and so on but in this sfg the number of non touching loops is equal to 0 and that's why the gains of all the non touching loops will be equal to 0 that's why the determinant is equal to 1 minus of l1 plus l2 now if we put the values of l1 and l2 in this equation we will have delta equal to 1 minus of 1 over s plus 1 minus of 1 over s plus 1 the loop gain l1 is equal to 1 over s plus 1 and the loop gain l2 is equal to minus 1 over s plus 1 now these two factors will cancel each other and the value of delta will be equal to 1 so the determinant of sfg is equal to 1 now we will move on to the calculation of associated path factor Let us consider the signal flow graph one more time and we know that if we want to calculate the associated path factor we need to eliminate or erase the forward path in this signal flow graph the forward path is r a b c y if we erase this forward path the signal flow graph will look like this now observe the signal flow graph and check for the remaining loops we can see that no loops are remaining in this signal flow graph as all the nodes are destroyed so we can say that the number of isolated loops is equal to 0 and we know that if the number of isolated loops is equal to 0 then the associated path factor with respect to that path is equal to 
and that's why the value of delta 1 is equal to 1. So now we are done with the calculation of forward path gain, the loop gains, the determinant of SFG and the associated path factor. We will now put all these values in the Mason's gain formula in order to calculate the overall transfer function. We have ys over rs which is the overall transfer function equal to summation from k equal to 1 to 1 pk multiplied with del k over delta. The number of forward paths in this signal flow graph is equal to 1 and that's why the value of n is equal to 1. Now if we open this summation we will have ys over rs equal to p1 multiplied with del1 over delta. Now putting all the values that we have calculated in this equation we will have ys over rs equal to 1 over s plus 1 multiplied with 1 over 1. The forward path gain p1 is equal to 1 over s plus 1, the value of associated path factor is equal to 1 and the value of determinant of SFG is equal to 1. If we solve this, we will have the transfer function ys over rs equal to 1 over s plus 1. And this is the overall transfer function of the given block diagram. And we have calculated this by the use of Mason's gain rule. This is a conceptual problem, so I want you all to go through this problem one more time. And then after that, I will give you a homework problem. Try this problem on your own and if you are able to do it, post your answers in the comment section. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.